Hello everyone. Good afternoon. This is CK, CK from Darknet Group. And uh, currently I'm part of Method Atom as part of Learning Met. And I know there are a few folks joined from our team as well. And let me let me set the context here. Okay. So I know that there are like a 100 plus uh, invite, invites are sent to the Darknet group members. And that I know like many yeah. people. Hi, Krishna. Yeah. Uh, hi, CK. Yep. Good afternoon. Yes. So many people already working in uh, like uh, intermediate level or even in advanced level with .NET or .NET Core applications. But this particular session is all about giving uh, the idea about how we can debug or like when we face the issues, how the debugging skills can be applied. Okay. So I have some examples with that. I will explain it um, with very simple examples so that you will understand better. So let, let me start with that. All right. Is my screen visible to everyone? Yes. Yes, again. And also, uh, how is my voice? Am I audible for everyone? Yes. No. Yes. yes. All right. So to start with, right, I have one sample application. This is not about like applications or like showcasing many of the features and all. It's all about uh, debugging the .NET related things. Okay. Um, as everyone of you already using Visual Studio as an IDE, right? Uh, normally, when we run the application, so any application you will set as um, startup project and then you will set particular page as startup page then you will run the applications again this is not about uh, running any angular application or any other applications so just i took one of the application as an example okay uh, so let me let me go ahead so there are two ways when you want to debug anything locally right so you can simply set a startup project and then set a startup page and you can click on like uh, if you want to change the browser you can change it but i am running it on google chrome okay this way you can do another way like when you run the application locally even you can attach the debugger like when you go to debug attach to process and then you should click on this particular show process from all users There is a particular process called W3 here. Okay. So anyway, let, let me run this, then you will understand. Right now, no application running, so it won't come up. Just let it load. I'll be showcasing same example with different scenarios, at least seven to eight different scenarios of like what all different kind of issues can occur or what all things we miss when we develop. Okay. So based on that, uh, this particular debugging session has been scheduled out. So now for a minute, I stop this process. Now I just want to show you what I was talking about when you go to attach process so process from all users and then now if you see right w3wp.exe so this is the process which is associated uh, to debug anything related to dotnet framework okay got it okay. let, let me attach this anyway so now the first thing I want to showcase, say for example, you have an API. Uh, let me go to particular API also. Assume that you have written an API, okay? Stop. Fine. So you have the API in .NET, MVC, 
you have written an api you have given route and everything now as part of your front end application you are consuming that particular api fine as in that uh, you have given in any format see i am giving example from this service helper or your angular application even if you are trying from postman or swagger right so just assume that you are consuming this particular api okay now i'll show case from starting what kind of issue can come and uh, how we can see that I'm entering with username password. Let me just clear this. Okay. So this is just nothing but uh, your developer tool. Many of you know that pressing F12 or function F12, so you can bring this up in your browser. Now, what I want to showcase about that particular API. Now click on login. Okay. Let, let's check the network tab. So I went to network tab. Now you see this particular What happened in between? Hello. I see K. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, share your screen, uh, full screen. Mm, yeah, I was doing that only. Not sure what is the issue. Just a minute. Is it visible? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let let me start from. I think uh, maybe I I lost in between. I don't know. So where I left? Any idea? Anyone? Or I will start from scratch. Okay. See, 
when we debug any .NET application, right? Say one thing that from your local, uh, you can run it using particular browser, or like when you run the application, you can go to attach to process, and then so sorry, always select this checkbox. So process from all users, and then check for W three WP. So this is the process associated with the .NET framework, okay? So this will be used for debugging, fine? So I'm just attaching this and running a particular application just. Just ready. let me run that again, I think that is gone. So I want to showcase you, there are like uh, I'm taking one example of one API, but with seven to eight different scenarios, how or like what all different ways we could encounter issues or we face problem and we may miss out some of the things and how we can troubleshoot and fix those issues. Okay. We'll let it come up. Meanwhile, I am opening um, debugger also, pressing F12 or function F12 from your browser. Okay. So now I just click on login. So let's say I want to showcase about particular API. Fine. If you see this API, right, it is failed. Get application build version. Now I am copying this. One thing there are like many folks, right? Uh, may not be even aware about the simple way to check where this particular uh, method or API is getting called. So simple thing always we can do using Control C T F from your keyboard. So you will find and replace, right? So in that you just to look for find. Okay, find what you paste that method name in your current project. So I'm doing on the front end project because from where exactly the call goes first we want to locate that particular place and do find all so let it search it will be up now A few seconds And meanwhile, see when we see here, right? It says four not four not found. What that mean? Anyone easily say that four zero four not found this particular API? What could be the issue? Part is incorrect. Okay, it is incorrect. So it can be incorrect in many ways. Okay. Now look at this. This is the place in the service helper file. Um, so this API is getting referred just a minute. So I have mentioned incorrectly for a purpose. Okay. Uh, you can see the same thing. See now I am debugging from a local front end application. Same thing you can do with your Swagger or Postman, whatever. Fine. Now in the account based controller, since here it is mentioned account, right? So account based controller. This method is there get application build version. Okay. However, here there is some mistake let's exactly check whether it is there or not. it is not there get application build version right so this thing not found okay so that there is some issue means that exact method name is not present here so there are two cases one the method you see there, there could be chance even though you may have the api name with that particular name but your router name right it is different so always you take the router name and put it here okay now i'll show what is the issue here there is some spelling mistake get application build version there are two p but in this place 
it was wrong. So this is just an example that this is just the case that either the API is not at all there or you have done even small mistake due to that there is an issue. Okay. So this is the way you need to always think about multiple things even from the start. So I am coming from this entry point so that you will understand when we have particular API and how we are consuming from like what all scenario the error can come or the issue can come. This is how you should debug from scratch. Okay. So now I'm putting the correct correct API URL or correct URL I'm putting here. Fine. So let's check once again. Just to referencing this particular page and then entering username password for that so let me clear here and then I'm clicking on this now the token AP is getting called it is such that and then goes to get application build version that also saturated fine so now it is such as it is correct now let's check the response also so it, it has brought some value fine so now what did we learn here the first thing is that there is high chance even our developer sometime may be overconfident yes i have written the api correctly and the, everything is there but it still shows 404 not font okay it is always to not to just look at by I uh, like overlook the word, that thing that yes, this name is there, this is the API I'm calling, this API is here. Always look this way. Always check, find out whether it is correct or not. First check from the entry point from where it is getting called. Then check on the API controller level also whether that method exactly present or not. Right? You got it? And always ensure you use the route name. If you mention the route, right? use that route name here so now coming to the next example okay so i prepared with like example so that i don't want to uh, make changes runtime on the c sub side again build all those things so i have kept some uh, examples for you so now another thing uh, i'm keeping it like get application version not passed okay let's see what are the issues as it goes Now I am not interested from this. Let it go anywhere. I'm again once again. I'm going to run this. We don't have to refresh, but the, as that sample application, right? It redirects to somewhere else. What I'll do? I will simply go to my login page. Now, once again, let's go check. This time I'm going to debug something and show you. Just on it. Since it's not showing it, just let, let me reload or log in again. So I want to see that particular API call and so what is happening. I just on that. this time i am pointing you to different 
API. Okay. Now I'll come to this API also. I will apply breakpoint after this. Once let it run, and then let's check once again. It takes lots of time to run, just a minute. All right. Entering username, password. Correct. Calling the token API. Now, you see the API is such as okay, get application build version fast or uh, not fast. Means the API is such as, but you don't see the response. It is coming as empty. So, what could be the issue? So, let's see here. The same API, but I have written a copy here. Okay, it is calling application build version then it is calling particular Let, let's put breakpoint here also just let me put breakpoint okay Think some of the API calls still going on. Just anyway. Uh, See what I want to highlight here. If you see, you come to this particular method, uh, there is a variable assigned, right, with empty, and also the store procedure is used to get the version number, and it it is applied over here, right, and then it is returned. However, you go back to that particular original API method. Am I audible, everyone? Yes, yes. You yeah so sometime what we'll do you, you see the return statement return request create response and then http status okay but you see the response what did it is returning just the end okay so say for example developer one right he write all very good code and he go and write uh say for example this particular piece of code one person is written and with store processor getting the version number and all good it returned the version number however the one who is on the api side okay there could be chance multiple methods different different code section will be handled or written by different folks right so initially they might have done uh, the api thing just with mock or like a, just to, to check the api working or not they may have written this response okay just a templatized they may have written this now after calling this particular api even it is 100 percent such as it is returning the uh, ap means version number whatever the response i'm just taking here version number say for example you are getting the user detail right so you get all those things but that is not returned back right but for the front end application the api call is such as and the response also is there 200 okay but the data is not visible why because the response does not have the required detail then you have to come and check and then you will figure out 
that this particular issue is there and troubleshoot and fix it right so what do you have to get you will have to create the response similar to this one so you'll have to send that particular object right so this is one type of um issue or mistake so when we say issue right how the issues are coming because of some mistakes because of some unit testing not done properly by the developer right they know they means they everyone even including me like we believe that we write very good code there is nothing wrong in the code but the output is not coming so this could be one of the scenario right we may have the issues now so let's see the application is up and running so let me sign out i'll showcase another example so this time i'll i will make it let it let it fail just and then i'll talk about the exception handling also with the same error but uh, that time you won't get the error so now i mentioned like get application build version error okay so let's make this to fail really running on the separate one let it load So again, I am signing in. So let the token jump it. Okay, it takes time. Sorry, some issue. Yes. yeah token is passed now get application build version so this particular API. so now i put the debugger here okay so there is no exception only here in this just closely watch and i'm taking in and it throws the error now if you see this okay what it is saying could not find store procedure PRC get application build version new. Okay. What that mean? Anyone? Tim? Anyone? What is the issue here? There is no store procedure. Okay. So now in this case also, right? There could be two scenario. So let, let me come to that particular method. So let, let's go here. So you can go to tab so there is one store procedure name mentioned here to get the application build version okay so it there are two cases one you mentioned one database connection string that could be wrong means wrong means you are pointing out the wrong database maybe people might be saying that i have written this store procedure it is part of base content okay there is store procedure but the application is failing then another one come and check that okay you have that sp in yes that is a database but means yes content that is a database but here you are connecting to yes database so that could be one issue another issue you are pointing out your correct database but that store project is not at all there okay so this is like you always think when you troubleshoot issue right always think in a different perspective don't always think that the store project is there even when, when someone asks you will show, show that file even you will show that file particularly in bitbucket everywhere yes you have written you committed everything is there in database is there but there could be chance it is in the wrong database right so that that is the problem correct right? either you keep you are connecting to wrong database or you don't have that store project at all you are going to get the same error 
So think in that perspective. Now, why we got this error? And another thing that see this is 500, right? So 500 internal server error. Most of the time you get. So what that mean? Okay, there is high chance. Okay, your code is breaking, or something like this. Some connection is breaking. Any anything comes up, you are getting that as 500 internal server error. What if you handled this error? Okay, you say for example with try catch if you handled it, correct? What it will be the output? Will that run or will it will not run? Just a common question. See this. I have written two methods here. One. SP does not exist. Another one for error. In both the cases, I have the same code. Means I am putting the same store closure name. Right? But only difference here I have try catch. Okay. But not returning the error. Say, for example, you are catching the error and logging it somewhere. So here, what will happen? Any idea, team? In this case, what will happen? Hello, am I audible? It won't run the store procedure because it came to the cache. So it would catch and it would uh, go to some other logging. Mm -hmm. So let's see this time, right? So this is the method I am interested to run. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. The same thing, same scenario, same means the store procedure is not there. In another case, I didn't uh, kept try catch exception. So I want that to fail. Now here also it is going to fail, but what will happen? Let's see. Okay. Let me just below the page. Once again, I am logging in. Let me keep a debugger. So let, let's go here and keep in fact. Okay. Logging in. Token API getting called. Now it came here. Let's see what happened. Once again, this store project is not there and it failed. It went to exception. That time we didn't add try catch. Here we added try catch and it went to exception. And again, we, we are logging that error as well, but we are not throwing. Okay. So what happens? It comes here. It comes. And the API is such as. Okay. So now what will happen? What the team thing? I have no issues. The application running fine. My API is not breaking. Okay. Yeah. But it didn't respond. It didn't give the version number back. So always see, you see uh, the issue, right? It can come in any way, any different way. For example, when I showcase this one, right? Get application build version not passed. That issue as well as this issue, right? Both are same. For the front end, right? It didn't get, it didn't get the version number. Even though API such as 200 such as, some response came, but it didn't get the version number, okay? But the issues are different. In first case, okay, the store processor brought the detail, but however, the code API level, right? It didn't it didn't return properly. But in this case, in this case, the store processor is not at all there. It is failing. But due to we have the try catch exception and we are not throwing the error, what happens? The API got such as. 
KPA call guard searches, but again you get the same result, empty. You are not getting the version number here. Okay. So always think dynamically what all different issues could be. That is the reason I kept one simple method here for you with different scenarios, with different approach or like permutation combination, how you need to think about. So it is not just about when you say debugging the application, debugging the issue, right? Don't just look at, okay, I have this issue. I'm just running the application. I'm checking you. Even if you hundred times, right? If you check with the same perspective, you always be right, but you will not figure out the issue. Okay. So just think in this way and you will figure out like what all different issues it can be, right? Now let me show uh, even one more different scenario. So let's go ahead. So this error thing we have already seen. I want to show one more issue, similar issue, but another scenario. Okay. Let's see what is that issue. Once again, I am not interested with the application. I just want to show only what I want to show. Closing this. Guys, so far, is it making sense? Is it helping for you to how yeah. to think about and how to look when you troubleshoot? Yes. Okay, thanks. Yes. All right. So let's see what the error comes this time or what the output comes this time. I don't remember too many passwords. Just once again, I am logging in. Hopefully, this time it comes. Yes, token is getting called. Okay, get application build version. One second such as, but it got empty. So let's see what is there now. I'm picking this up and going to the method. Okay, now you guys will have to tell me what is the issue here, okay? Coming to this method and there is the application build version and then the API is getting called, uh, means in internal business method is getting called, okay? Do you see any issues here? You have the variable and the function call is there that is getting assigned and you can check the response also, right? The response also, the particular object, right? That has been built and that is getting sent back, okay? Do you see any issues here in this method? Anyone? Yes or no? So I'll move ahead. Anyone? No. No issues, right? Okay, good. There is no issues exactly in this particular place. But let's go inside this. Now you will have to tell me what is the issue, okay? Again, this is the business method, for example, or your database call or, or happening. Now you have the variable, okay? Yeah. And then you have the store browser also, and you have the connection string, and you are calling the store browser, right? And you are returning the version number. Now tell me why empty is coming. Not you the haven't uh, because you haven't actually cached the response from the SP. You are directly returning the. Haven't assigned anything to that variable. Tiger is the one, right? Yes, okay. Okay, so you got it right, right? So it did. We didn't assign that, right? Means we initialize this with the empty, but again, store project is getting called. But where is the value or returned value? It is not at all assigned back to this, right? Again, why I am talking about this particular point? It looks very silly, right? But we do very silly mistakes. Okay. When you run this store browser on your database, you will tell that my store browser working fine. It gave me the version number. And when you run the API, you will tell API running such as everything is fine. Store browser giving me this 
and even here in the api i am returning it back properly but still not visible correct so this is just one more example one more scenario i wanted to highlight where that small mistake or anything can happen does that make sense okay tim yes all right so this is one thing now i want to show another maybe uh, it could be same issue or different issue i don't know i don't remember but let's see now again once again you guys will have to help me to figure out what is the issue i'm closing this application i'm not interested So once again, I'm logging in. Just a okay. So let's see what is the API getting called now. Okay. So I have kept the uh, breakpoint over here. I think many, many of you know breakpoint how to keep like you can click here or press f9 or function f9 as per your keyboard okay now if you see i am adding one parameter build number and any anything say even you keep user id and pass this and you have the same store project okay now you tell me what is the issue here i'm just uh, going next now it is throwing error okay so let's check what is the error. It is saying procedure procedure XYZ, whatever the store project, has no parameters and arguments. Uh, uh, parameter uh, should be start with the at the rate of okay. so the field number. Yeah, any other guess? Any other guess? Store project has no parameters and arguments were supplied. What that mean? that means you're uh, you are making a parameterless uh, procedure but you are supplying some parameters into that mm -hmm. okay right see there are many a time right so say for example this store procedure right it does not accept even a single parameter okay no parameter is there but you are trying to send one parameter okay now in some cases what will happen you have five parameters in the store procedure but you send six parameters right or you have six parameters you send five what will happen in both you the will, cases you will get the message of incorrect number of arguments passed right so if six parameter expected only five passed you will get the another issue right but if five is there and you are passing six so you will get similar issue correct but now what will happen since since you have see there are you know, few things even the wiki we say like standard or whatever few things we do mistakes so for example now i just check once again since we have this try catch right and we have damn good logger also so we are logging all the errors whatever the error happens we are logging that that is absolutely fine but what happened next the api is such as right i just come out from this okay this api right the API is such as once again empty, right? So well, now we have seen there are like three or four different scenario for the same API which return empty value, but the issue could be different, right? So one at the API level we didn't apply properly and we are just sending the empty value, or another one at the business business code level, right? Business layer level. Even though we call the right store procedure, we get the detail, but we are not filling to the written object. Or we are calling the wrong store procedure, or the store procedure not present, but we are handling the error, errors, exceptions, but we return the empty object. Correct. So always think in multiple perspective to see what could be the issue. 
this is how like you need to think when you debug any particular issue right so now one final exa example i just want to showcase you guys and then any questions we can take take it out take it back just I have to change that system. <clears throat> yes, this is another one interesting thing. This is very similar also, but once again, it is more important. All right. I'm signing in. Token API is getting called. So I'm just jumping. So this return version number okay from your business layer it returns the version number and then okay the api is such as now let's see what is the output once again it is empty different method but the functionality is same store procedure is such as your business layer is such as now what is the issue here so this is the API method. Now tell me what is the issue here. Anyone? Just a minute. Yeah. What is the issue here? You are not assigning any value to application build version uh, variable. Yeah, right. So the object, whatever the app, say, even though we have this application build version and also the object, right? The output format that also we are sending. And but it is not assigned. It is equivalent to on the business layer side when you called store processor, right? And uh, the store processor returning the correct value, but not assigned to that particular variable. Similarly, here you are calling the business method, but not assigning it, assigning it. So the main example, what I'm bringing here to you guys is one simple method but there are seven to eight different scenarios the issue can occur anywhere because of one small mistakes and when we talk about debugging or troubleshoot it is not that we are debugging or troubleshooting to fix some unknown things okay everything is there just there in front of your eyes all you have to look at each and everything as a what as a baby like you need to see from scratch don't overlook your code that everything is proper everything is perfect okay so this is what i wanted to highlight uh, like multiple scenarios or multiple ways you need to look at particular issue and troubleshoot it's all about your debugging skill how you can evolve with your debugging skills fine so hope everyone this particular session right is it useful helpful for everyone to think in the right direction when you debug particular issues uh, yes ek okay so now anyway this is just one session we thought of keep it for like uh, looking for all the audience because yeah, i know there are like professors even some intermediate level people but want to keep from very basic level how they can easily grasp and understand and look at multiple perspective to solve particular issues when they look at our debugging or troubleshooting particular .NET related issues, fine. So now any any questions you have or like how you want to uh, say, for example, in advanced level or like in .NET core or anything you are with, right? So anything particular you want to know, want to know about it. Just uh, let me know your questions or your thoughts. I will list down those things and we may plan for one more session very advanced level okay maybe in the next month but i just want to know your feedback or your questions your thought 
or like what do you exactly want to know about it so anyone you can open up and uh, raise your questions or suggestions yes tim we are more people on dotnet side uh, i have some uh, suggestions ck if i may yeah 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 uh, uh yeah yeah so ck uh, i believe uh, few years back uh, i was reading a a blog uh, wherein uh, some of the senior people from microsoft uh, actually someone from the uh, ph team uh, mm -hmm. actually wrote a wrote a blog stating that there are various features there are various uh, blogging uh, feature uh, sorry there are various debugging features that they've added in the vs uh, okay. uh and yeah uh, related to which uh, a lot of developers don't know about it so okay. uh, also now uh, people uh, in vs uh, we have this watch we mm -hmm. have this uh, immediate window okay and some cool features that we don't uh, use Correct. on a daily we, we don't basis use on a daily basis so immediate window is one very powerful thing then we have this watch we have the call stack Correct. and a lot of things so i was thinking if we could uh, deep dive into these features of a uh, vs visual studio mm -hmm. uh, i believe in 2020 uh, i believe the vs version of uh, this year that is 2020 i think brought a lot of cool features mm -hmm. uh, i i'll go back again uh, check whether uh, do i still have access to that blog okay. so that we can uh, target some of these cool features of vs itself so that uh, we'll be able to leverage those features so it saves a lot of time sometimes uh, it helps a lot in visualizing the data uh, if you're dealing with a very big data. So uh, that was my suggestion. OK, I think that, that's a very good thing. You know, let me have a look at those things, right? And I, I think it is nice suggestions so that like if all our developers, all our .NET team members know those uh, cool, cool features, right? They can utilize it. They can use that. And it, it will definitely help for productivity also. Thanks, Thayer. Anyone else? Any questions, suggestions? Or like, a, uh, you see, when you debug or troubleshoot applications, any specific thing or any specific problem you face or advanced thing you want to know about it. So we may plan for a .NET Core also, but just want to know about your inputs, your suggestions. So accordingly, we can plan out in future. Anyone else? Trupti, people? Vikram. All right. No questions. Uh, I had one more thing to add, CK. Yes, ma uh, please. But uh, it is uh, not uh, regarding uh, the debugging. It is mm -hmm. uh, complete off topic. So should I? Yeah. Anything. See, team. As we are .NET folks, right? Mm -hmm. Anything on .NET side, anything you wish, right? Just share the inputs, right? Yeah, so we the can, thing. We can yeah. Plan out so, yeah. so uh, as you know, that in .NET Core uh, we have this inbuilt of uh, dependency injection right. that .NET has added. So, uh, on a similar note, I was recently thinking if uh, LM could uh, organize a session on solid principles, the solid design principles, which are the basic fundamental principles right. that I believe all of us should know. So yeah, if something yeah. of that sort could happen, actually, uh, I believe that would really uh, make us a better developer in terms of writing okay. flexible code and robust code. So if yep. something of that sort could actually happen, uh, that would be a dream come true. I mean, it would yeah, really think, help right. a lot of so people. So let me discuss with uh, Krishna also. Like uh, basically, when we talk about solid principle, right? So we can think about two things also, like solid principles and uh, design patterns together, right? so that it will add value to all the .NET folks. Thanks, Thayer. Anyone else, Tim? Should I stop the recording? Someone. I think Priya is there, right? Uh, yes, I'm there. Uh, Anyone else? Any all, CK, if all the questions are taken, I'll stop the recording. Just a minute, I think. Anyone yeah. else, Aparna or anyone, Ojendra? Guys, please come up with your suggestion. Even if no questions, come up with suggestions. 
that will help out as we are a very large team and we can empower ourselves right anyway thanks guys and thanks for your time and it, it is very very good for me to connect with all you guys and give a session so i think priya it seems no more questions maybe you can uh, stop the recording yes okay